Hello, and thank you for joining us for this post-launch press conference for Axiom Mission 2. I'm Bettina Klein with Axiom Space. The four-person crew of Commander Peggy Whitson, Pilot John Schaffner, and Mission Specialists Ali Al-Karni and Rayana Bernawi are now flying to the International Space Station. Liftoff was at 5.37 p.m. We are now looking forward to a 10-day space mission, including eight days aboard the ISS, with a full calendar of science, research, and um, lots of busy activities. Ta to discuss the mission, the launch, and what's going to happen next, I have a great team here with me, Matt Onler, Chief Technology Officer at Axiom Space, Joe Montalbano, Manager of the International Space Station Program at NASA, and Benji Reed, Senior Director of Human Spaceflight Programs at SpaceX. In a minute, we will listen to their remarks, and then we'll open the line to questions. Um, for the media participating, you can submit a question by either using the chat function, using the please either raise your hand on, on the um, on Zoom, or you can press star nine for those participating on the line. With that, we will start our opening remarks, and we'll start with Matt Onler. Matt? Well, thank you, Bettina. Uh, well, it was an exciting day. It was great to see uh, the launch. Um, it was a very, very exciting day. It was personally exciting for me to see the first stage return to the launch site, which I had not seen before personally, so that was really, really interesting. You know, first, uh, though, I want to thank our partners, uh, SpaceX and NASA. There's a, a tremendous amount of work that goes into these missions, um, and we really, really appreciate the opportunity. But in the last few weeks, there's been really a lot of work that's gone on uh, with our partners, SpaceX and NASA, just to get us this opportunity to, to launch today. So very, very appreciative of that. Um, I had the opportunity to see the crew send off with their families this morning, which is always uh, – a really interesting event. You know, all of this crew, most of them have spent their whole life dreaming of this uh, this moment. And uh, so to see them with their families uh, was really, really uh, a great opportunity. Now I'm excited to see uh, the vehicle dock to the ISS tomorrow morning and get started on the tremendous research uh, that we have going. Um, we're doing really, really interesting uh, life science experiments, um, the crew is going to be very busy. We have about 20 projects that we're doing, about 100 hours of hands-on research, um, and uh, all toward a path of what we think the future of low Earth orbit is, where we're solving some of the really hard problems that are uh, faced by people on Earth, and we're using the microgravity environment to find new ways to do that. And then the last piece that I'm always excited about is all the STEM outreach that uh, the crew will be doing. I think it's very important to, to reach out to our young folks, and so I'm uh, very excited about uh, seeing that activity. Thank you so much, Matt. Next, we'll hear from Joe Maltabano. Thank you, Bettina, and thank you for joining us today. Outstanding day, outstanding launch. Just uh, It was very cool to see the SpaceX launch today. Uh, with this launch, uh, that sets us up for a docking uh, shortly after 9 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow, we'll have hatch opening about two hours after docking, and then the ceremony, the opening ceremony, about uh, 30 minutes after hatch opening. Us uh, busy week on board ISS. In addition to the Axiom crew, we have a Russian Progress, an unmanned cargo vehicle, launching on May 24th. Uh, the time for that, for those tracking, is 08:56 a.m. Eastern time, and it's just a two-orbit rendezvous. So docking would be 12.20 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, we're looking forward to this Axiom mission and building upon the lessons learned from Axiom 1. Uh, the crew on board is ready. Uh, obviously, the Axiom 2 crew is ready, and the ground teams are ready. So a huge thanks to Axiom, SpaceX, and all my NASA colleagues for making this possible. With that, uh, Bettina, let me hand it back over to you. Thank you, Joel. Next, we have Benji Reed. Benji? Hi, thank you. Um, exciting day. Um, it's always uh, uh, exciting and an honor to uh, be able to carry these folks to the uh, International Space Station um, and, and great to be able to work with our partners. Um, as uh, Joel and Matt already talked about, working together with Axiom and NASA and the uh, Saudi Space Commission um, has been great. 
um, and uh, we're on the first part of this journey. Next up, we need to get them safely to the station and, uh, and then have a great time um, there doing the work that they have to do and the great research, um, and then um, bring them back home safely to their families. Um, interestingly, this launch today was uh, the 10th uh, uh, launch of a human spaceflight for uh, SpaceX. Um, also, is our uh, first time we've ret returned a booster um, to the launch site from a human space flight. So for those who are here at the Cape, got to see that booster come home uh, or get, got to hear the sonic boom when it came in, which is pretty cool. Um, overall, it was a very clean count, um, uh, good launch. We did have one issue that we were tra tracking from um, early in the morning. We had uh, noticed that there had been a, a small leak um, in a valve in the attitude control system of the booster. This, um, this is part of a system that's uh, really for the booster itself. It's not part of a specific engine, and it's used to help control the booster attitude during return, not during launch. Um, the teams had plenty of time to assess and evaluate um, that small leak, um, and the valve itself is part of a redundant system. Um, and in, out of an abundance of caution, we performed um, an analysis, a worst-case analysis, um, to even assess whether or not uh, you know would be okay if uh, if that valve had fully opened, if there wasn't uh, you know not even a small leak, and it turned out that we had plenty of margin against that. Um, the most important thing that we did was ensure that there was no increased risk to the crew, and we continued to monitor that leak throughout the count, and um, and were able to proceed. Um, and uh, other than that, everything else went very well. We're very glad the weather worked out for this launch. Um, as I mentioned earlier, our focus now is on getting the crew safely to station. Uh, Dragon is in good health, um, and I hear that the crew is also doing well. Um, safety is our top priority as always. Um, it's an honor and a, a sacred honor. I've used that, those terms before, but it really is. And uh, we can't thank enough the, the crew members themselves, their families, for trusting us for this launch and the trust that we uh, have from Axiom and NASA and the Saudi Space Commission um, and uh, all of us working together to further low Earth orbit um, space operations, commercialization, and, um, and ultimately making life multiplanetary. And uh, finally, a great big thank you to uh, Space Launch Delta 45 for all of their help as we move through these launches. Thank you so much, Benji. With that, we will open up the floor to questions to reporters. As a reminder, if you have a question, please use the raise your hand function um, uh, on your screen. You could also submit a question to the moderator via the chat function, and those that are calling in can press star nine to submit a question. Um, we have one question already submitted, and we'll start with this. Jay Keegan from Launchpad asks, thanks for doing this, and congratulations to Axiom Space, SpaceX, and NASA. A question for Benji. Can you comment on the performance of the landing burn during today's mission? It seems much steeper than other RTLS landings. Was this expected? Thanks. That's a great question, and, and honestly, as far as I know, everything was totally nominal on our return, um, and uh, I didn't specifically myself note anything uh, different, but uh, um, you know, our, our teams, as always, will evaluate all the data afterward and make sure that everything went great, but uh, so far, things look really good. Thank you, Benji. Next question is from Tarek Malik. Your line's open. Hold on. We're having some technical difficulties listening to you, so um, give us one moment. As we figure that out, we'll take a next question submitted by Marsha Dunn from AP. What happened to the Anvil Cloud? that was five miles away before liftoff? Did it slow down, move in a different direction? Um, Benji will, yeah. So um, it, bottom line is it, it dissipated sufficiently for us to, uh, for us to go, um, which is, um, was really great, you know, and that, that's the nature of the weather here. We have to watch it closely and make sure that we're uh, closely following the things that we needed to keep everybody safe. Wonderful. I know I was doing a rain dance to avoid the rain here, and it was great. Um, so we're very excited to launch. 
If you have a question, please submit it um, in the chat. You can raise your hand um, or press star nine. One second as we... Okay, Marsha Smith. Marsha, can you hear us? Yes, I can, Bettina. By the way, I try, to use chat. I try to use chat and it says chat is disabled. Oh, well, thank you for letting us know. So now we can hear you even better. Okay, so anyway, my question was to Benji. Benji mentioned yesterday about this problem with a panel with nine fasteners that didn't have enough fill in them, and you were fixing that last night. And I was never clear, is that on the rocket or on the capsule? Is that issue gone now because the rocket's back where it needs to be, or is there still an issue for the capsule when it comes back to Earth? Sure. Let me clarify that. Absolutely. So that was on the thermal protection system of the capsule itself, of the Dragon capsule. Um, and and there's, you know, you we care very much about the uh, the what we call the outer mold line of the capsule during ascent. It's very important for aerodynamics and including aerodynamic heating on ascent. Particularly concerning though, when you ever need to come home, right? You need to make sure your thermal protection system is just exactly what, the way that you intend it to be, and it's. I'm going to keep everybody safe as they come through that heating in the atmosphere on return. Um, and so that's why we uh, made sure that we got those, uh, those, those nine small pockets filled with the uh, right amount of thermal protection material, um, and that got done last night. Um, the teams were actually able to complete that um, in good time um, in the evening. And, uh, and so now that, that capsule was great for ascent and also will be great for reentry. Thank you. A few more questions coming in through the Q and A function. Um, that so may, maybe there's some technical difficulties, but we are getting some, and you could always also raise your hand. A question for Irene Klotz for Matt. Matt, um, what is the status of the MLPM for Axiom Station? When would you expect that to fly? Uh, the MPLM, we took receipt of the MPLM. So the MPLM is the multi-purpose logistics module. Um, they flew on the shuttle uh, to the station filled with logistics and spares and, and consumables. Um, we took possession of the MPLM called uh, Raffaello last month, and it is in controlled storage at our new facility at the Houston Spaceport. Um, it's currently... Um, plan to fly that as our third module, so we will convert it into our research and manufacturing facility. So we'll add a service module so that it can um, dock <clears throat> after it gets delivered to orbit. Um, it can rendezvous and dock with the ISS, so we have to add a service module to that. Um, but the plan is to launch that as our third module to the ISS. Thank you. Um, next, we have a question from Tarek Malik. Um, from space.com for Benji Reed. You mentioned that this is this flight was your tenth human space flight and the first to land at LZ1. Can you comment on how that and ten flight rate in three years line up with SpaceX expectations for its human space flight program beyond just NASA flights? And if that rate is at capacity or there's still room for more? And and what does landing a crewed Falcon 9 back at LZ-1 buy you in terms of turnaround maintenance or cost savings? So, good, long question. Great, yeah, great question. First of all, uh, it's awesome, right? This is just so cool to think that we are at our 10th human space flight. Um, and uh, and it's, it's, it's kind of hard to believe, just frankly, to be honest. I mean, I'm sitting here down at, um, you know, uh, here at the Cape, here at uh, Kennedy Space Center and sitting here with uh, folks that have, you know, now become friends over so much time of working together. And, uh, and just to, but it, on the other hand, it feels like it's just been the other day when we flew Demo 2 and that, that whole mission. So being able to fly Axiom 2 and, 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 and see a whole new group of people getting out of the station is, 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 is amazing. Um, and, uh, and to think that we're at number 10 really is kind of mind-blowing. So um, it, it is certainly in what I would have hoped we would be able to do. Um, you know, I, I hate to say anything about expectations, right? Space flight is hard, um, and we every 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 single mission we treat as its own um, its own opportunity to to do our best and to keep everybody safe. 
So, um, but it's certainly what I would hope is that we're we'll able to do. And one day, right, the goal is to be able to fly thousands and eventually millions of people into space, right? The, the, in order to make life multiplanetary, we have to be able to send whole civilizations forth towards the stars. And this is, uh, this is how we've got to get there. So I'm, I'm excited that, you know, we're on these initial steps. Um, the other part of your question about uh, return to launch site, that's, uh, you know, that's really kind of an outcome of the ongoing performance and performance margin that we're able to get on the Falcon. Um, and, um, and also it, it certainly helps overall in terms of, uh, you know, time to bring it back. We don't have to wait for it to come back on the drone ship. We've got access to the booster immediately um, and uh, it, can, it can work from there. But thanks for the question. Thank you. Um, I have a question here um, for Benji from Jackie Waddles of CNN. Um, Benji, this question is on thermal protection. Do we know if this was an issue that came up during the manufacturing process or something that may have happened after it left the factory? Um, so, what, you know, as you're putting together the vehicle and doing your final preparations on the vehicle, um, you obviously you're closing out these panels, right? And when as you close out these exterior panels, there are um, places where you have to put in fasteners to, to close the panels, and then you need to fill in those those gaps with um, a, a thermal protection material. And um, and this was just uh, an, an area where we discovered that the, these particular nine fasteners had uh, a little too little of the uh, material that was needed, so we, we ensured that they had enough before they launched. Thank you. Question from Marcia Smith, exactly when is undocking and how many days could it be delayed by weather and not affected the June 3rd launch date for SpaceX 28? Joel, you want to answer that? So let's see, we're planning eight dock days, and so we're looking at an undocking of May 30th. As far as the exact time, once we get a little closer, we'll finalize that exact time. Um, you know, on the number of days between undocking and uh, the SpaceX 28 mission, it's really going to be driven, um, it's a combination be driven by the pad turnaround that has to refurb the pad from today's launch and then from the, the undocking. We'll need a, a little time for the crew to have some, some rest time between the two missions. But uh, once we get a little closer, we'll be looking at weather. We'll be looking at, uh, you know, getting some cr the crew some time off. And then as we get towards the end of the Axiom 2 mission, then we'll know the exact uh, time for the uh, CRS-28 mission. For um, this question is from Jay Keegan for Benji. Follow up on, on the trajectory, how did it differ from AX-1 and other NASA crew missions due to the RTLS landing? Not, not a significant difference um, in, uh, in that trajectory. Um, fundamentally, we still have to get to station. Thank you. Um, we, if you have a question, reminder, just you can use the chat function, you can use the Q&A function, you can raise your hand, and you can also press star 9 to submit a question. Um, I see Marcia Smith's hand raised. I'm trying to allow to talk. Marcia, do you have a, a follow-up question? Uh, no, Dana, thanks. I didn't know that I'd raise my hand, but I don't have another question. Thank you for asking, letting me ask two already. No problem. Okay. Is there any other questions? Hearing none, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll provide some information and allow for any more questions, but I know it was a, a great launch, a great day. So everyone is speechless of how fantastic everything is. Um, we will and we will say uh, that SpaceX recently tweeted that we have an opportunity to talk to the AX2 crew um, on orbit. Will be roughly about 1.5 hours at around 8:40 p.m. tonight. We will confirm the opportunity about 15 minutes prior to the start of the event. A lot of that depends on how the crew is feeling and other fa um, other factors. But I know that um, those of us that were lucky enough to see when they landed here at at um, KSC ahead of launch and how excited they are. I can't imagine how excited they are now that they're in space. So um, we are looking forward to that. 
Um, future opportunities, we mentioned them before, but just to confirm, um, for docking coverage, we'll start Monday, May 22nd at 7.30 a.m. Eastern. That's when the webcast will resume. Docking is now scheduled for 9.16 a.m. Eastern. Hatch will open at 11.13, and the crew welcome ceremony will start at 11.45 a.m. And I know that all of us around the world are looking forward to that. If there are no other questions, um, we will conclude this call. If you have follow-up questions, you can reach us at media at axiomspace.com. And again, thank you to all our partners and for all of those who participated here and at home. Have a great day and go AX2. Goodbye.